Today we are dealing with the Jesus Prayer in our series on Christian meditation. The Jesus Prayer is perhaps the oldest mantra used in Christianity. Um, some people argue that it is not a mantra, that it is a prayer that is repeated. I fail to see the difference between repeating a line of words, calling it a prayer, and repeating a line of words and calling it a mantra. But there are some within the various churches that like to differentiate themselves away from more Eastern uh, religions. The Jesus Prayer originally stemmed from the Desert Fathers, who we dealt with in another video. The Desert Fathers believed that it was really important to achieve a state of quiet and that the best way of doing this if you were having difficulty getting becoming quiet um, by yourself was through one of two methods. One was to recite the Bible and they actually recited the entire Bible of Old Testament and New Testament. Of course actually at that time the New Testament wasn't fully formed. The final form of the New Testament as we see it today didn't occur until around 390 AD. The other way that they tried to achieve the state of calmness and quiet reflection was by the repetition of what has become known as the Jesus Prayer. Now there are different forms of this prayer. The form that I particularly like is one called um, Come Jesus Come. There, in the Catholic tradition, uh, the, actually the more modern Catholic tradition is to say, Lord have mercy on me, a sinner, or words to that effect. The point of the Jesus prayer was to achieve oneness with the Holy Spirit. And so what we're going to do now is go through the different steps of using the Jesus Prayer to achieve the feeling of the Holy Spirit within you or within us. But before we do that, I'd like to I'd like to read for you a quote from Saint John Climacus from the sixth century, who said, and I quote, Unite the memory of Jesus with your breathing then you will find the true value of Hezekiah. Now, Hezekiah is that feeling of peace within you, the quiet feeling of the Holy Spirit within you, the feeling of love that comes, and it comes from the heart and goes out from the heart. So now what we're going to do is follow this list of instructions. Um, it's a list of eight parts. So the first part is to become quiet to the best of your ability. It doesn't matter if thoughts arise. This is not a time to be reading or to be distracted. So simply close the eyes and become quiet. We then start to repeat the Jesus prayer or the Jesus mantra. Come Jesus, come. 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 And you can say it out loud or you can say it internally. The third part of this is to bring the mind back using the breath. But this is very reminiscent of the practice of mindfulness that we've discussed before. You become distracted. We all become distracted. This is a normal thing. This is not something that just happens to you. It's something that happens to every meditator. And so the way to bring yourself back is to focus on that spot just below the nose and on the upper lip and Feel the air going across that and 
and say to yourself, I breathe in, I breathe out. We can go back to that earlier meditation on the breath and just focus on the quality of the breath. Is the breath long? Is the breath short? Etc. Now that you've brought yourself back using the breath and you've been repeating the Jesus prayer, now bring yourself your attention Focus your inner gaze is another way of, of uh, discussing this. But focus it on your heart or your navel, or that spot that's four finger widths below the navel, that whole area there. And as you do that focus, the next step is to feel a certain warmth. So you feel a warmth in that area from the heart down to below the navel. And that warmth starts to fill your entire body. Now again, that warmth is very interesting because in Buddhism, for example, it's called tumo in the heat. And it's used uh, as a method to do more advanced meditation. In Christianity, people refer to it or some theologians have referred to it as the Holy Spirit. Other theologians call it the inner feeling of love. I, I'm just going to call it the feeling of love and compassion that brings a warmth throughout your entire body. And you can help this by going back again to some of the earlier meditations where we focus on other people, perhaps a grandchild, Perhaps your mother, perhaps a child, perhaps a really good friend. You feel a warmth when you think of them. Now concentrate that warmth from the heart to the navel and let it expand. So the warmth is expanding to fill the body with that feeling of love and compassion. You can start by just feeling that love and compassion for one individual or perhaps a small group of family or your extended family. And then start applying it perhaps to groups that you feel great compassion for, like the homeless or children that are caught in the midst of war. As you do it, you can feel the warmth will increase. You will perhaps even see a divine light. The interesting things that happens when we do mantra meditation, and you can go again to the series on playlist on mantra meditation if you want to follow a, uh, a mantra. One of the things that happens over time as we repeat that mantra is that it becomes part of us and it's really hard to explain unless you experience it. But I will find myself, for example, driving somewhere in the car and I realize that the mantra is repeating itself within my brain. That there is something going on within my mind that is repeating that mantra. It has become part of me. And that's the state that you want to get yourself to. It doesn't happen until you've repeated a mantra thousands of times. But don't be put off by that. Saying, come, Jesus, come. Come, Jesus, come. Come, Jesus, come. over and over again is not a tough thing to do. It doesn't take a huge amount of time. 
And you don't have to be sitting in meditation with your eyes closed to do it. In fact, I would encourage you to get up off the couch or the meditation seat or the floor or whatever, wherever you're meditating and to walk around and do a walking meditation, just repeating the mantra, keeping your eyes open so you're not going to bump into things and continuing to repeat the mantra and continue doing things. I find it particularly helpful, for example, when I'm doing something that I previously didn't enjoy, like doing the dishes or vacuuming or whatever. I don't mind doing those things now because it's an opportunity to repeat the mantra and continue repeating it, even in uh, any situation. Because what happens is you forget about the situation and you just act within that situation. You've experienced it. If you drive a car and you're going from point A to B and you do that repetitively, say the way you drive to work every day, um, you, you will arrive at work and forget how you got there. You forget the things that happened because you've done it so many times that it's, you're on automatic. So that's the state that you want to get into with the mantra. You want to get it to the state where it happens automatically when you're doing things. And that will help be very helpful. So one of the real benefits of this type of meditation and the generation of inner fire and the identification with the Holy Spirit is the recognition that you can become filled with that pure Holy Spirit and that it will in fact over time burn out those things that you want to get rid of like anger or frustration or stress or panic attacks or grief whatever it is Whatever those things that are um, making you, let's say, obsess, even if it's for a short period of time, but the thoughts keep coming and you can't get rid of them, the mantra meditation will really help to burn through using that inner heat. It will burn through and release you from that emotion or feeling or negative thought sequence, or depression, or whatever it is that is undermining you and stopping you from becoming the individual that you want to become. May you be well. May you be happy. <laughs>